All right, Eric, it's great to have you here. Lauren, I'm excited to be here with you today. Yeah, we're just chatting. I know you got a lot of little ones over there and you're running a business and doing all kinds of things. I'm really excited to hear more about you and your story. Um, before we do, why don't we kind of hear a little bit more? We get into we're going to get into board of directors conversations, but tell us a little about you. Like, I, I, I mean, you got the family side, you got the work side, but like, how did this all come to be? And yeah, what's your background? Yeah, so uh, I, you know, I grew up in a household with another with another sibling, my sister, my best friend, and you know, I was one of these kids that was labeled with a D, right? ADHD, ADD, right? If it had a D in it, that was me. And, you know, I'm super grateful that my mother decided not to put me on Ritalin. And she probably wondered what the heck I was going to do with all of that hyperactivity as a kid. Uh, that poor woman, when I came, <laughs> with that poor woman, when I came out, you know, I high fived the doctor and told her to buckle her seatbelt and hold on for dear life. And, you know, here I am, uh, close to 40 years later and seven different entities and all sorts of stuff going on. And my, uh, my passion is really around empowering other advisors through our network, Forefront Advisor Network, and really helping advisors become their dream self. You know, we've got a mm -hmm. formula for it, which is yep. it's mindset plus heart set plus skill set is the equation to help you become your, your dream self. So, so I sit today, uh, you know, I run a RIA in Austin, Texas, yeah. a national insurance agency for financial advisors and for our work that we do, a tax business, a divorce Amazing. mediation business, an advisor consulting company, and an exit planning business as it sits today. So needless to say, between five kids and seven businesses, People want to know when the heck do I sleep? Yes, I do sleep. I sleep very well because yeah. by the time my head hits the pillow, I'm tired. I yeah, I mean, you must be an amazing delegator too, you know. So that's a lot of a lot of things to uh, orchestrate. I've got an ama I've got an amazing team of people, right? That have really helped me. I'm a great collaborator. I'm an amazing leader and a great mentor, but a horrible manager. So here I am today. Well, it's done something right to get to where you are today. So I think that actually leads into this component of like building teams, right? And like also kind of where you got, uh, you know, having these conversations, I often hear folks talk about how they got to where they are because of the other people that have helped them get to where they are, right? And a lot of that is like mentorship, surround yourself with the, the best people. And so I want to hear more about that. Um, you do have this formula, right, for how you coach and shape advisors. But what is the side around, we talked a little bit earlier about board of directors, like a personal board of directors, and what's your thinking around kind of making sure you've got the best folks around you? Yeah, I think I think it's, it's you know, advisors who are going to be sitting here listening to it, listening to this discussion that we're having. It's super important for them to realize that it's really important that you get mentorship and you surround yourself with people that can encourage you to grow. And I think most people understand that they get it, but I don't think that they are strategic about it. And so we had developed a process that we go through every single year. I go through this, the advisors in our networks go through this, which is how do you build yourself a, personal board of directors of the people that you need to have in your life, the people that you mm -hmm. need to be surrounded by so that you yeah. could become the dream version of yourself that you want to become in, in life mm -hmm. and in business. Right. And so right. I think when people think about that, they think, well, how do I, how do I find these people? Right. Or how, mm -hmm. how do I get these tribe of mentors within my yeah. board of directors to really help me become, you know, the version of the self that I want to become. Mm -hmm. And I really think there's a couple of things that you could do. The first thing you can do is you look behind me on my shelf is you can turn yeah. to books, those people in those books, right? I always tell people there's no new problems. There is mm -hmm. always a book that you can read. There is always somebody that you can talk to that mm -hmm. you can basically, you know, solve your problem through that way. So finding mentors right. through books is one of the first things. 
You can find it through books. You can find it through uh, conferences and associations, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is you have to have a cheerleader. Life is hard. Let's be really honest. It will throw you curveballs. And in this advisor space and wealth management, you know, if if you're not growing and you're having challenges with your business, it can be very you know, there's lows of being an entrepreneur and growing your business mm-hmm. and business development. Mm-hmm. I think the third person that you've got to have on your board is a career coach, somebody mm-hmm. to help you figure out what what is the path that you should go down so that you can become yeah. your dream version of yourself, right? And I'm kind of running through this. And for folks yeah. that are listening to our discussion, we will be giving you a free worksheet for you to be able to work through this yourself. So the other person that you need is you need a wellness coach. Mm. In order to become who you want to become, you got to be healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all this Just, stuff. Go ahead. Now, are you talking wellness like um, like mental strength? Or are we talking wellness like physical wellness, you know? Or is it just like, like what, can you talk a little bit more about what that means? I, 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 for me, wellness involves three systems, okay? Mm-hmm. Right, and three systems and then the physical element. The three systems are, number one, you gotta be right up here. So you have mm-hmm. to be right mentally, right? Mm-hmm. Second, you gotta be right in your heart, right? That's emotionally. The third yeah. system is you gotta be right in your gut, right? Everything needs to be in alignment. And then the fourth system is you gotta be physically healthy, right? So mm-hmm. all of the things that we know we should do. And for those of you that are listening, don't shit on yourself. Do the best that you can and try to make progress. Drink an extra glass of water. Try to take some downtime, journal, read yep. something you like, go out for a walk. So that's wellness. You need to get somebody that is your wellness coach or somebody that's going to support you on that journey. Mm-hmm. For me, it might be somebody that goes near the refrigerator and slaps things out of my hand when I'm trying to eat it. I need a person <laughs> like that, okay? Okay. I need a nice slapper. Just slap it out of my hand. Uh, and then, I know. So like, swap that out, you know. Put the Coke <laughs> back in for the water. <laughs> you, listen, guys, you can't outrun your fork. So get a slapper yeah. to slap it out of your hand, okay? That's right. So, I like it. <laughs> the, other, the, the, other, the other two important people that you need to have on your personal board of directors is you need a connector. Mm-hmm. You need somebody oh, that yeah. is going to take you places in – in your profession and in the industry that you want to go. Somebody that's going to yeah. abdicate for you. Somebody that's going to put you at a seat at a table in a room that you, when you get there, you feel like you might not be ready for, you might not belong. That's, those are the types of people that are going to help you up level. And mm-hmm. then the last person you need on a board is you need peers. You need mm. other people to talk shop with and and, yeah. and to, to build camaraderie and Other relationships. Other folks that own RAAs, that sort of thing. Yep. Correct. Yep. So that you can so that so that you can talk shop. And so as as you guys are all out here listening to this, it's super impactful. It's so easy to build one of these boards. And you know what? You may have people in your life when you start doing this board. You may have three people that occupy three of the seats on your board. Right. But you need to ask yourself. Who needs to be on this board for me to go where I want to go? And then you need to take it upon yourself to build relationships with those people or study the books of those people that are on your board. Okay. So cheerleader, career coach, wellness coach, a connector, a peer, there's one other. So you got a mentor, a cheerleader, a career coach, a wellness coach, a connector, and a peer. One of each, or is there one of is each. Sort of like just one? Of, okay. So, one of the challenges that I've had, I've done mentoring for um, going back to my university, I went to Drake University, and I continue to mentor students, active students, right? Yep. And sometimes you just click, like you're like, hey, we totally click, it vibes, right? And then now in a business seat, you know, you hear that advice, like, I got to get mentors, but sometimes it's hard to find people you actually click with in all transparency or that there's that kind of trust. What do you recommend in like kind of helping to helping to go out and sort of solicit that? Is it just literally putting yourself out there? Like, Hey, 
can I check in with you on a, a quarterly basis? Can you actually be a part of a formal board? Like, what does that look like to be able to help to kind of cultivate that so that it it's like a natural click, right? So a cu- couple of things, right? Yes. Like in life, we there is natural clicks or chemistry that happens between right. two people, right? You just, you, you meet people and you're like, oh, it just clicks. And that's, that is a hundred percent natural. So if, if any of you out there are listening, if you're introverts, like I am, and everybody thinks I'm an extrovert, I am not, I have to go hide <laughs> in my turtle shell at the end of the day after doing yeah. all this stuff, because that's just me. But if, if you're an introvert, your first mentors may be all people and authors and books and things that you study yep. and you maybe may yep. do self work. Okay. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to get other people on your board, they're outside of books, which I strongly encourage. You need to have something of value that you can offer the mentor, your potential mm-hmm. mentor, right? And then secondarily, you need to be respectful of that person's time and come prepared with your questions and things that yep. you want to get out as the mentee. So yep. if you're deciding, like, I'll, I'll give you an example and we'll give him a shout out on this call. One of my... One of my favorite people is a guy by the name of Dennis Mosley Williams, who talks about mm-hmm. client experience. I heard mm-hmm. Dennis many years ago on a podcast and I studied all his work and I was mm. just enamored with him as a human being and how he showed up. Yeah. Well, I built a relationship with Dennis by reaching out to him and having a conversation and offering him some encouragement around things mm-hmm. that he was doing and how he was trying to yeah. grow his business. And as a result, as a result yeah. of that, and I didn't want anything from him as a result of that, he became one of my friends and we talk yeah. about, we talk shop and he gives me insights and advice. And I have this valuable yeah. mentorship relationship with him around client experience and how to mm-hmm. craft that better for clients. And that right. would have never happened had I not had the courage and I had not offered something of value, right? Even if you can't give mm-hmm. somebody something, everybody wants to be validated that, hey, yep. I see you. I see the impact that you're having. Hey, the yep. work that you're doing in our space with advisors is important. I just mm-hmm. want you to know I'm, I super appreciate you and it's so valuable. Thank you so much. It's had this amazing impact on me and my life and my family. Having yep. that sort of a heart and emotional intelligence yep. with mentors goes a long way. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so true. And I feel like I see this with, I mean, it may sound cliche, but just like outreach in general, like if it's PR, if it's sales, if it's just like relationships with your team, it's about like that genuine, Hey, I notice that I'm following and being able to have that dialogue. So those are some good tips. Um, yeah. To be able to build that, that team. What? Okay. So we're talking about like this personal board of directors, right? Yep. Do you feel like there's a distinct line of like a, a clear line between like a personal board of directors and a more of like in a business advisory board? Um, like so, I get in a board, right? They could be legally accountable and things of that sort. But I'd be curious if you have like in a business advisory board, if you think that is potentially a little um, different. I think they're, I think that they're, I think that they're different. Right. And, I, and I'm, you know, I'm not your normal guy. I like for those of you listening that believe that in work life balance, I think it's a myth. I think there's work life integration. You build a life and work just happens to be a component of it and you figure out how yeah. to, to to fit it into your schedule. And so for me, this personal board of director isn't just about professional development. It's really about developing you as a human being, as a person. You just you know, I tell people you happen to be uh, you're a human being who happens to be an entrepreneur who happens mm-hmm. to be a financial advisor or an RA owner mm-hmm. or whatever type of business that you're in. And so yeah. if you're it, you have to develop you in order for you to become the person that you want to become and to grow yep. into the success that you want. A business yep. advisory board is really more strategic. It's I have these issues. I have these business problems. It's not going to be really pouring into you as the person, the advisor, the leader, right? It's truly, they're totally, it's segmented and it's compartmentalized just the business. Yeah. So that, that personal advisory board is really for you specifically. So you can be a better leader, a better, you know, uh, parent or spouse or whatever it might be. Um, and really drive your, 
Herschel on missions too. Okay, so there's also paid advisors, even for the personal side of things. Like, do you think that that's worth it? Like, and to what degree? I mean, there's coaches and, or is it just sort of where you are in life? Like, what are you, what are your thoughts on the paid side? I mean, I think this is, is deeply personal for everybody, right? Every, you have to know yourself. You, you know, yeah. it's kind of like some people can go, some people can go online, watch some YouTube videos or find a yeah. book and build their own workout plan. And they're going to be disciplined enough to make the plan and sit down on Sundays and do the meal planning and do the stuff. And they're right. going to go to the gym and they're going to do everything. Okay. And, yeah. and they're going to, yeah. and, and they're going to be responsible for planning out. And some people are better served showing up and hiring a trainer and telling the trainer their goals and doing the things that the, the trainer tells them to yeah. do based on the goals that are crafted. So that's one method or other people may be like, you know what? I really love going to classes. So I show mm -hmm. up and I go to Pilates or I go to Zumba or I go to total body right. fitness. And so for me, like you have to know yourself, you have to know yeah. what levels of accountability you need. I think that advisor coaches can be phenomenal. I think that advisor mm -hmm. communities can be phenomenal. I think that mm -hmm. books could be phenomenal. You have to know who you are and what level mm -hmm. of accountability you need. And then what sort of community do you want to create around you with this board of directors yeah. and what you're trying to do? Okay. So we've got time for a few more questions, but yeah, please. once you've got your board of directors in place or maybe components of it, right? It takes time for it to be able to nurture and for you to find the right people or books or what have you. How do you avoid the whole analysis by paralysis? Like, okay, this person told me that, or this is going on, or what's the theme? Is there, are there any tips that you have to kind of help, I mean, is it starting with you first of clarification and then that will like where, what, yeah, how do you avoid that whole? Yeah, I, th I think one of, the, one of the things that gets like with the analysis paralysis piece, one of the things that you got to do before you start formulating the board is you have to sit down and have a conversation with yourself or have a thinking session of like, <clears throat> what is it that I'm truly trying to achieve what am i who am i truly trying to become so that i can be worthy of achieving the thing that i want and as yep. a result of that which people in all of these disciplines that i mentioned do i need to have in my life and on my personal board and so the thing about the board that's awesome is that by design everything is segmented so you're going to get different pieces of advice from different people tactically and strategically and in yep. total, they surround you as the complete person, the complete entrepreneur, the complete advisor. So you're, you, you won't get analysis paralysis per se, but mm -hmm. from time to time, there may be some things that like are conflicting in values, right? So if you're focused on wellness, but you've got mm -hmm. career things going on, you're going to have to figure out which one is more important or which one is more impactful to, to move the needle of who you want, who you need to grow into to hit your goals and who you want to be as a professional. Yeah. We actually did another podcast um, with Lindsay. We'll make sure to link to it, but the whole conversation was basically around this idea of, oh, it's almost like your, your, your own personal mini business plan for a lack of better terms. Yeah. Right. And being able to get clear on that, um, which flow like flows into what you're talking about. And I, it's funny in talking with, you know, younger folks too, I always try to encourage that. Like, it's not just about saying, Hey, I'm looking for a job and I'm open to anything, but I'm specifically looking for this. And I think that same principle can apply when really trying to drive your right team, what you want or what have you. So, um, well, you kind of narrow the playing field, but. Well, here's the thing, you know, I heard, you know, I've, I've been a, a involved indirectly in different communities and have subscribed to different authors and mentors. And one of one of my biggest mentors is one of the books that's behind me is a gentleman by the name of Dan Sullivan, who started a coaching organization called The Strategic Coach. And one of the phrases that he has that's always uh, stuck with me is this: right, you know, right mindset attracts right network attracts right mm -hmm. opportunities. And so mm -hmm. to me, when we talk about going through this por personal board, uh, uh, this personal board of directors and building one out for yourself, it's you have to start with your mindset first. 
then you yep. create that you create this right network, right, or your board. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, the opportunities are going to present itself as you develop as a person. And I think that's the element yeah, that's missing. There's so much talk in our industry about technical skills and technical knowledge and technology and AI this and AI that. Yeah, the reality of it is, that. is that if you don't develop yourself, none of these other things matter and you're not going to be a person yeah. or advisor worthy of attracting the type of business that you're trying to create for yourself. Yep. That's a shiny object. So, so well said. Oh, any other thoughts? You know, I, I think uh, if anybody's listening and they have questions around this, you know, please reach out to me. Like I said, we will be giving you this personal de board of development template for you to build one, you know, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or any other social channels. I'm happy to talk to you about this. I'm happy to troubleshoot you guys if you have some messages around, I really want to talk to so-and-so, how would I approach them about this? You know, I would, re I would recommend be genuine. It's mm -hmm. okay to tell somebody, everybody wants to help somebody. It makes right. us feel way better to give than to receive. So as you're reaching out to potential mentors, position it as having them help you, but what can you do to help them too? Yep. So well said. Eric, thank you so much. We'll make sure to include those links below as well to your LinkedIn and, and website and so on and so forth. But appreciate your time and your insights, especially on such an important topic. I think sometimes, you know, as business owners and what have you, we're so focused on all the parts of growing your business, but not always one of the most important, which is just on you and how you can help to make sure you've got the right, um, the right team. So thank you again. Thank you so much for having me, Lauren. Take care. You as well.